And now, it's time for the Thames Men. Hello! Hello! Hey, George. How you doing? Yeah, I'm alive, still alive, <laughs> alive and kicking. I'm not well, going to go on about how I survived COVID, but, you know, me too, hashtag survivor. <laughs> it was nice to see you back. Anyway, it's been a very quiet week, you know. It's like no. I, I've been having to run around to do all these gigs and things, and there you are, you know, just oh, on no, your... On sorry. So, yeah, everyone, I'm so... Th- well, first of all, hi, I'm Alex. I'm from San Francisco. I'm George. I'm in Los Angeles. And you reached the tent when you lucky, lucky bastard. Um, sorry about not being able to uh, do the gigs with you, but obviously now we can tell why I didn't manage to do the gigs because I didn't really want to go and cough on everyone. Yeah, I think having a super spreader event brought on by the Thamesman would not be uh, the key moment, really, would it? I should do a, a range of merch, super spreader. Super spreaders. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not asymptomatic. I was seriously ill. So, well, you, you still know. sound a bit rough. So anyway, hopefully you won't cough and splutter through my, too much of this. But uh, well, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. Congratulations, you lucky viewer. You just landed bang in the middle of Bowie week. <laughs> so a uh, subscriber of ours and a patron, Suzati. Hello, Suzati. Thank you so much for pulling this together. She is a big Bowie fan and she just did five tracks for five days. You can contact us um, on the information below if you've got a uh, curated week you'd like to put forward, but we picked this one up immediately. And she's picked together the best tracks for Bowie over his uh, huge career. And we are just about to go into Suffragette City. Oh, that's a great track. So we got some notes. Uh, yes. Do you want me to read them? Yes, like please. Read them? Uh, yeah. yeah, so you don't have to cough and things like that. I'm we'll try. my cup of tea. Yeah, cup of tea. Uh, nice excellent. So, so, we, so actually, we have some notes. So thank you very much for the notes, everyone. Um, and so anyway, so this is Suffragette City. Uh, and so this was apparently almost sung by Mott the Hoople, uh, but they rejected it in favour of all the young dudes. Uh, a crazy melting pot of influences brought together to make something new and glam. See, this is your era, Alex. This is you, isn't it? The blazing guitar of Mick Ronson and Little Richard-inspired piano of Nicky Graham. The saxophone sound is made from an ARP synthesizer, which would go on heavily used in this Berlin trilogy. I don't know the ARP, but anyway. Um, but you uh, know the Berlin trilogy? I know over the Berlin trilogy, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's, a whole, that's a whole genre in itself. Which we- <laughs> Now, so this video is a fan-made construction, uh, taking snippets from various places uh, of uh, Bowie's 70, 1972 appearances to give it a live clip of the full song as none existed. So that's kind of interesting. So is. this is a, so a mishmash of clips to make the whole track. So. This is, I know this is going to be good. And uh, we'll talk about it at the end. But Mick Rodinson, check him out, the guitarist. Okay. This is going to be, this is going to be, you're going to see why we're going to talk about Mick Ronson and how important he is to Bowie. Okay. All right. Let's let's have a listen. And then we'll have a chat. I can't wait for this. I really can't wait for this. Live 972, rare footage, 2016 edit. Thank you, Cesarti. Really looking forward to this. Count me in, big boy. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. I'm 
Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was a great edit, though. Oh, that was fantastic. Really good edit. Really good edit. <laughs> I see what you mean about the guitar, though. That is fantastic. That so is Mick cool. Ronson, Mick Ronson, God, he was good, the guitarist. So, so he, he also, basically, there is David Bowie, and um, just in behind of the shadows is Mick Ronson. And, you know, there's a lot, there's a whole crowd that's saying Bowie wouldn't have been anything without Mick Ronson. Okay. So, you know, when it came down to producing, Mick Ronson did all that as well with Bowie. When they went into the, uh, when Lou Reed uh, brought in David Bowie to do Transformer, Apparently, it, you know, it was a bit of Barry, but it was Mick Ronson again. And then, yeah. you know, he, he never, ever got the credit. But, you know, as in that glam rock guitar style, all that power that came through Ziggy Stardust, that's all Mick Ronson. Okay. All right. And what happened to Mick Ronson? He died. Well, that sucks. But he, uh, but before he died, he's he's an English guy. Before he died, he he he, you know, uh, I was watching uh, last night. I was watching a um, a Bob Dylan Thunder, uh, you know, a documentary on that. He he was playing on that. He was a he, you know, he did Leather Nun. He produced oh. them. Oh really? Um, you know, he he went off and did did so many other bands. He was a gun for hire. Right. Um, but he also, when uh, Lou Reed was going to go on tour, it was like, all right, guys, you really need the guitar. You need the glam rock. So they brought in Ian Hunter. There was in him, Ian Hunter. He was the gun for hire, but he was also the producer behind a lot of known albums. You know, the list is as long as your arm. And he, wow. but he never, ever, ever, ever got the credit he deserved. Well, okay. Well, how could you with Barry up the front? Yeah, exactly. I mean, but, but Barry, Barry is a fantastic. And that track is, so, can you imagine being, it looked like, you know, one of those sort of, gigs in some small English town hall or something like, you know, can you imagine being in that front row with just them there in front of you blazing that track out? Wouldn't that have been just fantastic? Well, you know, I think he say, I think, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think he, I think, I think he gave a lot of people latched onto him. So there were a lot of people that post-war in England, they had their parents who had been through the war and they, they were in their two up, two down and they, their dad would wear a tie and have a pipe and go gardening. And, and the kids wanted to rebel and there was nothing to really rebel. And, and then all of a sudden on TV, there was this androgynous alien. Right. And I think that he was the savior of a lot of middle English kids. And right. they had something to gravitate, and they all went to the the very famous, you know, like nineteen seventy seven Odeon gig, and and there they all were, and they finally had an icon to follow. And he brought through, you know, he brought through obviously glam rock and androgyny, and he he, he was an icon that people could just latch on. Remember, as we said before, what England was post war, it was like Bulgaria in the winter. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Very grim, grim at times. Grim. Yeah. We had shit cars that would rust. We had, you know, strikes <laughs> and then this and go everything. And Power then, cuts. Yeah. And then we got Bowie up on stage. His yeah. clothes were made by his wife yeah. and, and all handmade and everything. And he invented the persona. And then streamed in on TV was an icon that everyone could latch onto for Middle England post war depression. Yeah, that's really, really good point, actually. And it, it, it like the right person for the right time. You know, yes. Uh, yes, you know something that was, yeah, which, which I, I think probably led to a whole evolution, revolution. I mean, obviously the Beatles were a big part of that as well. If you think about it, the era, you know, they were doing their thing and they were huge, of course. You know, the British invasion and all that stuff. Agree, so. but it was. I think that if you were slightly left field, you felt you weren't in the in crowd. If you didn't feel mainstream and you didn't feel like a beanie popper or whatever, there was someone who was different. That's and, okay. And, yeah. Okay. And, that makes and, sense. And yeah. You've got this anxiety as a teenager. You don't fit in or whatever. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, you're, it's like 
there with Barry in his weird outfit. It was like that crowd just got him. The art crowd, the art student crowd. It's, you uh, know, he, he as I said in the earlier uh, email, uh, earlier video, he was transmedia. He was he was a full package from the hair color all the way down to the last note. You know. Yeah, yeah, very, that's pretty true. Good point. Well said, sir. Well said. I like that. That's a good. Good. Well, that summer. was absolute fucking classic track brilliant and well done to that uh, person who made that video that was brilliant that was an awesome edit yeah excellent excellent well we're gonna have to do some more then aren't we susan arty our uh, patron and uh, subscriber who suggested this week that was absolutely fantastic i also did read a note from Susati how she was in California and uh, she was feeling uh, a put out and she didn't have a crowd and then all of a sudden met someone who introduced her to David Bowie and she gravitated towards him and, um, you know, says basically, bar none, that uh, if it wasn't for him, uh, you know, she wouldn't know where he would have been. She gave him a central point that she could gravitate onto. Okay. All right. Well, that very cool. Cool. Excellent. Oh. Ooh, heavy stuff. So. Heavy. Good. All right, mate. Well, let's uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Yep. Uh, join us for the ne next few videos coming up, or any videos for that matter. Thank um, you so much for joining us in the middle of Bowie Week. What will tomorrow bring? What mm. will tomorrow bring? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see you on the other <laughs> side. See you later. Bye. <laughs>